Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, yesterday I did a whole thing and there was no audio. I apologize for that. Uh, today, hopefully, there's audio. And uh, so I'm just going to try to keep this one quick. And uh, so let's get right to it. The, the purpose. Where we are right now, we when we look back at what Christ has accomplished for us as the church, we know that in the first century, Jesus Christ came, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, completed his ministry here on earth, and died a horrible, cruel death for the sins of the world. He was buried, and he rose again in victory. About 40 days later, he would ascend to heaven and wait on the time to be told by the Father, this is the time to go get our people. That between that time and now where we're at, the gospel of Christ has been spreading. Churches have been planted, established, and are growing. And the world is full of, of the church of God, the true global church of God. But we know that there is coming a day. According to Jesus' words in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, according to Paul's writings, John's writings, and of course, according to the book of Revelation. Right, and it's in Genesis, Isaiah, Joel. It's all throughout the Bible. Daniel. It's all throughout the Bible. Okay. It's overwhelming. That there is coming a day where the enemy will rise up for one final battle. Now, the way that this leads up... That's not exactly true. Here's how I see it playing out. That what we are told to look... So notice he says, this is how I see it playing out. He doesn't say, this is what the Bible says. That's important. At least he's being honest about it, right? The way that this leads up, here's how I see it playing out. That what we are told to look for, first and foremost, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, is something called the abomination of desolation. All right, so we're actually, okay. Which cannot take place unless first, according to Daniel's 70th week, there is a seven-year period established that is all right, okay, so you got it all wrong. inaugurated by a peace treaty. Oh. So hold this with me. Here's the timeline very briefly. Oh. Jesus ascends. You have the church age. Then... There is a, a treaty signed, a peace treaty, a covenant Wrong. between the Jews and a particular group. No. I believe the Muslims. No, no. And in that, no. there is a time where the no. temple is rebuilt. There we go. All right. So Jesus died in vain, and he didn't he even need to die. And uh, it's not Jesus who rebuilds the temple. It's the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is the one that brings in everlasting righteousness according to this fellow here of course uh, at least I gotta credit him for saying this is how I see it of course that's not what the Bible says so I'm gonna try I want to make this real quick how in the world do you throw all that on the table and then make this thing quick well let's see if I can do it all right, so in the book of Daniel, I, I just I wonder if people even read this. Are they just listening to what other people say? You notice here that Daniel is considering or thinking about in the first year of his reign, I Daniel understood by books the number of the years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem now scroll down a little bit further the angel comes to Daniel and he says ah no, he doesn't say 70 years. He says 70 weeks. 
right? And he says to Daniel, let's see here. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. And I am come to show thee. For thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks, not years, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Keep listening here. If you don't know, then listen. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, to make an end of sins. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. And to seal up the vision and prophecy. And to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. All right, so let's do the math on this. We got 70 weeks here. We got seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Three score being 60 years. All right. And two weeks. So we got 62 and seven. That's 69. That's going to leave us with one week at the end. After three score and two weeks, 62 weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. All right. Now, this here, when it says, The people of the prince that shall come destroy the city and the sanctuary... That's talking about the Jews will come to kill Jesus and destroy the temple. All right. And when they did that, they killed the body. Know ye not that ye are the temple? Here. Know ye not. Know ye not. Oops, Temple. Tempe? Temp no, you're not. Tempe, Arizona. Gee whiz. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. Okay. Is that not enough? You need more? That might be off again, of course. John chapter 2. But he spake of the temple of his body. You're not sure what that's talking about? Well, let's go here where it says, Forty and six years was this temple and building without reared up in three days. But he spake 
of the temple of his body. First he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The people of the prince shall come to destroy the city and the sanctuary. You think of the sanctuary as the temple, the city as the people. All right. And the, I mean, you, there's, the whole Bible supports this stuff, guys. So Jesus takes the kingdom of God from them and gives it to a people bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right? In times past that were not a people but are now the people of God. Right? I mean, this is should be pretty obvious, pretty simple stuff. Where are we at here? Am I in the wrong place again? How'd that happen? In which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Right? So, I mean, it's as clear as day. The New Testament reveals all this stuff. And he shall confirm he, <laughs> the Messiah. The Messiah is the prince of the people. The people of the prince are the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus. You guys, you can't see that? It's amazing, really. And Jesus confirmed the covenant, the new covenant, the new promise, better promises. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. You didn't know this stuff? You're an expert on the scripture and you don't know this? Look at all those books. Maybe you should have spent some time reading the Bible. I'm serious about that. Very serious. And this is incredible. This is so simple and easy to understand. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week of covenant and better covenant. I mean, it, it couldn't be more obvious, man. Well, you thought this was the Antichrist. No, the, I don't, in my opinion, I think it's the Muslims. In your opinion, you think the Muslims are going to cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease? What? Oh, Where did you get that idea from? Well, that's what Reverend Smitty says. That's what all these guys in these books say. Yeah, okay, well... That's not what the Bible says. I mean, this is not rocket science, fellas. God didn't make this too complicated to understand. God didn't make this so that you have to go to seminary school, Bible college, when you're a snot-nosed little 19-year-old kid. <clears throat> There's only one requirement to understand this stuff, and it's real simple. It's real easy. Anybody can have it. It's a th little thing called faith. You have to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. When you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands comes directly from God, then your eyes are opened. And you shall see. And it should be as clear as day. This stuff is so simple. It's so easy. 
It's amazing. It, it, to me, it's amazing how wonderful the scripture is, and it's incredible how wrong so many people are. Obviously wrong. It's Jesus that causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease. If you had any <laughs> confusion about that, I guess, I, I don't know how, but if you would have reread here at verse 24, you notice what, three verses before? It's Jesus that makes an end of sins. It's the sacrifice that covers the sin, the sacrifice and oblation, oblations were put in place as a covering for the sin. And of course, uh, for example, in Hebrews 10, it says it's not possible that the blood of bulls. Oh, I want to say it's not possible. Here we go. Let's go. Or that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins? It's not possible. It's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. But that's what they were commanded, instructed to do, is to have the sacrifices and the oblations as a covering for sin, but it was never possible that the blood of bulls and goats, it was never possible that those sacrifices and oblations should take away sins. Right, so that's why God was manifest in the flesh. He came in our body on the earth to do the works necessary to take away sins. And this is exactly what Daniel's talking about, what the angel is showing Daniel. Seventy weeks are deter determined upon thy people to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's exactly what Jesus did. He did it. He's the one that confirmed the covenant. Jesus did it, right? He's the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Jesus did it. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Yeah, I guess you can categorize all the sacrifice, oblation, over, and the overspreading uh, of the abominations. Uh, all that stuff is done away with when he laid down his life. It's all done away with. Even until the consummation, which is the end of the world, which is when... Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are transformed into our glorified bodies when we're changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. When we, the body of Christ, come together as one with Christ in our incorruptible, immortal bodies. That's the consummation. That's the coming together as one. A new flesh. And will be set back down on a new earth with new heavens. All right, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The wrath of God shall be poured upon those that are not saved. And this is obvious. I mean, this is supported all throughout the Bible, and it starts really with Genesis three verse fifteen, when the Lord said of the serpent unto the serpent. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the, really the first prophecy. And this first prophecy is echoed all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And this is another one. It's consistent. It's not separate. It's not a standalone prophecy. 
It's consistent. It's, you can connect the dots and, and get it and see it. That Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, right? That's the wrath of God. That's, uh, that's what's going to be determined, right? To be poured. The wrath of God is going to be poured upon the desolate. The desolate is uh, represents the unsaved, the not having the Spirit of God. The not having faith, not being a child of God, being desolate of God. That's what that's referring to. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's so simple. Why in the world? Now, where in the world do you get the Antichrist? Well, I know how they did it, and it was explained to me that we have to go to verse 25, and well, you notice that capital P. Well, down here is a small P, so that must be the opposite of this. Now, you guys are stupid. I mean, if you're that gullible and that stupid, then you deserve to believe a lie. You really do. You have to then ignore everything that you've read in the entire Bible to come up with this ridiculous doctrine that there is coming in the future, what, this, according to this guy, a Muslim leader, all right, a Muslim leader is going to come and he's going to make a covenant with the Jews and then he's going to cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And he's the one. I mean, the reason this happens, you can't get around this. I mean, what are you going to do? Ignore the 70 weeks that are determined upon my people and upon my holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins? And to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness? You have to... <laughs> You have to just willingly ignore the whole 70-week vision. 70 weeks. 70 weeks. This idea that, uh, well, for three and a half years, well, that's not, that's not nothing. Three and a half years, this vision's only 70 weeks. <laughs> Golly gee whiz. You have to then completely ignore and change the prophecy of the Bible, of the Word of God, the prophecy of God. It's unbelievable that you would do that. And it's not, it's not three and a half weeks. It's not three and a half years. It's in the midst of the week. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease by laying down his life. Okay. It's incredible, man. It, it, it's really sad. Because it, it's really, it's revealing. Revealing and exposing yourself as a man that does not believe God. I mean, you're not just confusing this. <laughs> you think, consider John chapter 2, the temple. You know, like what I showed you before, know ye not that ye are the temple of God in John chapter 2? Or is it 2? Yeah, heck, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And then the Jews, the people of the prince, said, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou bear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. This is the vision that's being described here in Daniel chapter 9. And the angel even says, consider the vision. Therefore, 
consider the vision.